Hi everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So my friend Grant Thompson and the YouTube channel What's Inside did a video on what's inside of an Etch-a-Sketch. Now, Grant Thompson's part of the video was they attempted to make thermite using the aluminum powder contained within these, because apparently they contain aluminum powder. Now, they weren't able to get it to work, and so Grant Thompson actually contacted me and asked if I could figure out a way to get it to work. So, let's break it open and find out. That did it. Sort of. Okay, I got it open. Yeah, let's dump this out and see what we get. Looks like I'm gonna have to sift all the broken glass out of it now. Remind me next time I do this not to shatter the glass because this is, you know, all over the place and actually I wasn't able to get all of the glass pieces out. You can see little tiny bits of glass in here. But anyway, Grant Thompson figured out that there was uh, little plastic beads in here, and that seems to be primarily what this is. I did a bit of research on my own, and I found that the plastic beads are actually polystyrene, and their purpose is to keep the aluminum from clumping. But you're definitely not going to be able to make thermite using these plastic beads, because plastic doesn't react with iron oxide to making a thermite-like reaction. So I'm going to have to find a way to get these beads out of there. And my, this aluminum is sticky. I'm also thinking that maybe the aluminum has something coating it, making it more sticky like this. It's almost like an oil, in fact. So my guess is it's got like paraffin oil or something on there. So I'm going to have to find something to remove the polystyrene beads and the coating on the aluminum. Now, what dissolves styrofoam, you know, polystyrene? Well, acetone. <laughs> that almost looks like mercury now. Look at this. Ooh. It might be kind of hard to pour off because look how it's like floating. This might still work after all because I've noticed that the polystyrene didn't actually dissolve. It just kind of got sticky and clumped together. So I was able to easily pull out a blob of the plastic here. And I think my gloves are melting too so I probably should switch these out. But now it looks like I've got aluminum powder floating on acetone. How about I filter it? That way I'll be able to capture the aluminum particles when most of the acetone, which potentially has bunches of stuff dissolved into it, will then run through the filter. Well, at least the particle size on the aluminum is not small enough to go through this filter. That is really weird how that reacts. It's like the aluminum powder works its way to the top of the acetone and they get stuck there. As the acetone evaporates, I assume. So all the acetone dripped out. I've rinsed it a couple of times and now I've let it dry in the sun. And I've got some nice pieces of aluminum powder cake, hopefully. So here's some iron oxide and over there's my aluminum. Let's mix them together on top of this crucible and see if they'll react. A little bit of iron, a little bit of aluminum here. Mix them together roughly equal amounts by volume. That's about right. That looked promising. That's a thermite reaction there. It's not very good though. Maybe if I got the mixture perfect it would be better. You see the idea behind thermite is that aluminum is a more reactive material than iron is and so the aluminum steals away the oxygen atoms from the iron leaving pure iron and oxidized aluminum. Well copper is even less reactive than iron so it makes sense that if I were to use copper oxide the aluminum would actually strip away its oxygens more strongly than even did from the iron. Let's see what happens when I put a little bit of copper oxide, this is black cupric oxide, in with the aluminum. Again, putting them together at about equal volumes. Now I'm using a spoon because the wind was blowing it all over the place, but now it should keep it together a little bit better. Let's see if it'll light. <laughs> it worked. That was a thermite reaction right there. And you notice it went a lot faster because of the extra energy released. Now if I look at this closely, 
I should be able to see little beads of copper. Yeah, I'd say that's some copper. Might have to go clean it up for you guys to see it, but there it is. Can you see the uh, reddish color of the metallic copper? Some of you may have made the observation that I didn't use all of the powder from the Etch-A-Sketch in that test. That was just a very small scale test to see if I could actually get a reaction. But since I've got this out, I may as well actually finish it off and see how big of a reaction I can make with this. Now I'm not going to use the acetone exclusively like last time because that kind of made a mess. So this time I've wisened up a little bit. I'm going to use a cheesecloth because the uh, holes in the cheesecloth are just small enough to keep the beads from going through, but the aluminum can. So let's just pour this on here and give this a shake to see if I can separate these plastic beads without using chemicals. And then of course I'll wash the powder with acetone to finish it. Hmm. Yeah, it's working. I still don't think the recovery is very good, but at least this time I'm not going to have to deal with a bunch of sticky fluidized plastic. Since the copper oxide did so well, I think I'm going to produce a bit more. So I have a piece of copper wire here, and my little furnace is set for 1600 degrees. So I'm going to position this copper just inside of this, and then we close the lid. So air will attack the copper when it's really hot, but not quite molten, so the copper will actually oxidize, just like iron rusts. Okay, the copper's been in here for over an hour. Let's pull it out of there and see what happens. Now I think the best way to do this would be to grab it from underneath because the copper is going to be all nice and soft and squishy. Set it in the pan there. Now the uh, oxide is basically a ceramic, so it'll just kind of flake off as the yeah the different uh, thermal expansion rates. Just for giggles, I also put a copper penny in there, as you can see, and uh, that's producing the copper oxide as well. And I've contained this because it was sending little pieces everywhere. Dun dun dun! And there it is. I think I can extract a little bit more from the Etch-A-Sketch, but uh, let's call that half of what's actually in there. So there's probably just about one gram of aluminum powder in that Etch-A-Sketch. That's not very much, is it? But hey, that is reactive aluminum powder from a child's toy. Now all I gotta do is weigh out the amount of copper that I need. It should make something interesting, yeah? So I figure I'm gonna need about two grams of this cupric oxide here to get the reaction to go perfectly. There, close enough. Hey, there's actually a piece of the penny right there. <laughs> That's cool. It'll be uh, slightly penny powered. Anyway, I'm just going to mix these together loosely. I don't want to grind it up into a super fine powder because that could actually become an explosive. I just want this to burn fast. I don't want it to go kaboom. So there's my copper thermite mixture. And I'm actually going to set it off in the top of this, well, bottom actually, of this tin can here. That way I can see if it can melt through anything. Set it onto this cast iron skillet. And light it with my micro torch. <laughs> Guys, it actually burned through this tin can. I mean, that's not much of a feat, but I think this is probably the first time anyone's ever actually burned through something using an Etch-A-Sketch. That is amazing. And just about uh, two and a half grams of the thermite, too. Of course, it's going to take quite a few Etch-A-Sketches to melt the lock, but I think we're going to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time. <laughs>